In this video, I'll show you how to turn a simple list of events into a fully dynamic calendar in Excel. You'll be able to switch months and dates, see events automatically placed on the correct dates, and even have the week number on the side. Best part is, any new event you add on the list updates instantly in the calendar. Let me show you how it's done. First up, here's the list of events with the dates on one side and the description next to that. So the first thing we need to do is work on the whole layout. So let's say this is Monday, Tuesday, and let me fast forward the rest. We have the weekday laid out and then just above that, we can maybe say that this is the month. So I'm just gonna put January for the time being and over here, I'm just gonna put 2026. Now within each of these, we need to actually write the dates. So I'm gonna use the sequence formula for that. We want a total of one row and then we want seven numbers. So you can see what that looks like from one to seven here. Then we're gonna add one extra row in here. So we're gonna leave that empty. And the next one is where the next sequence would start. So now it's gonna be one row again. We want seven columns, but as the start, we want it to start at the seven right here, plus one. Close the parenthesis and hit enter. So this is now plus one. So it starts at eight and then it goes all the way to 14. I can just copy that and paste it down below like this. Awesome, so we now have it fully listed out. Basically, I added this extra row over here as that's where we'll actually add the name of the event. So the description of each of these right here. So far, so good, but the first of the month isn't necessarily a Monday like we have right over here. So we'll actually need to create a formula to calculate that. Right here, what we'll do first is add the date of the first day here in the calendar. So it's gonna be the one, ampersand the January ampersand 2026. I'm selecting these two dynamically like this instead of typing them in so that if I change this to February or March etc it's all going to update in the calendar. Now that we have that we should use the weekday function. I'm just going to show you here on the side what it does. So I would select this date here and it's going to tell me starting from Monday because our calendar is in Monday to Sunday format exactly what day of the week is gonna be that January 1st, which in this case would be a Thursday. Knowing that information, we can then get inside of the sequence function and apply it here. So the start is gonna be the M2, so this current date minus whatever number of weekdays we've got. So we're gonna put the weekday function in here, select this date, comma, we want it from Monday to Sunday, so that's gonna be number two. And we can close the parenthesis again, hit enter there. So now we have it ready, but you'll notice it's not exactly right. The first year should be on the Thursday, not on the Friday. And so we're gonna just add a plus one at the very end to make that adjustment. Nice, that's all working correctly. And because all of these other dates are tied to this first row, we can just change this to let's say March and you'll notice all of our data updates automatically. Next up, we want to make the calendar more dynamic so we can easily change the dates. And for this over here, I've created this helper column so you can just type this in manually with all of the months and some of the years. Obviously make this longer if you want. But first, let's try to center each of these. So I'm gonna select the three and go to merge and center. Same thing over here, select the whole year part and merge and center again. Now we can create the dropdown by going over to data, clicking on data validation, and we want a list. That's gonna be a list of dates so in this case it's all of the months from january all the way to december that's why i created that nice helper column so now you can see that all of this is in this drop down i can change to january and everything updates same thing over with the year let me do that quickly i'm gonna choose a list and the source is gonna be all of my years feel free to make that longer if you need to press on ok and we have that drop down too great let me go back Awesome, and before we progress to the next step, I have a cool announcement. With the help of HubSpot, I've created a guided template with 50 Excel hacks to boost your productivity. By clicking the link in the description, you can access this resource completely for free. It includes 10 of my personal favorite Excel hacks and a further 40 hacks to cover even more scenarios. The download includes instructions on how to use them and sample data to practice with. HubSpot even includes a short demo video for each one. Personally, I find this Excel template most useful to refresh my memory on some of the best Excel hacks there are. And what's great is that I can practice them one by one with the sample data they provide. 
So I recommend visiting the link in the description below to download this completely free 50 Excel hacks guided template from HubSpot to boost your Excel productivity. And thanks to them for sponsoring this video. Now that we have this fully dynamic calendar, we can start working on adding each of these different transactions or events. And for this, we're gonna go over here and type equals filter. That's a function we'll use. The array is basically what do you want in it. So we want the actual descriptions. Comma here as the include. We wanna include all of the dates. So this column right here, whenever it's equals to the date where the cell actually is. So this 30 and then that should move along. Close up parenthesis and hit enter. You'll notice first we get an error and that's because we don't have a match. So we need to go back in here as the if empty area. We can just put two quotations. So whenever it's empty, we're just telling it to ignore it. So the first one should be working and we just need to paste that along. So I'm going to do that with control R. Same thing down below. So I'm going to copy all of this and paste it down here on each of these different rows. And let's make sure we change the year to 2026. You'll notice here that we have all of the different transactions showing up. So January 12th, let's see, it's this market update that's showing up over here. That said, we have a spill error right here. That's actually because we have two transactions on that date, which is very much feasible, right? You could have two events like calling Anna in the tax deadline on the same date. So we want to be able to accommodate for that. And for this, we can use the text join function. Hit the tab key and here the delimiter is what do you want to separate the call Anna and the tax deadline? Well, maybe in quotations we can put a comma and a space. That seems pretty sensible. Comma in here. Ignore any empty cells. So we'll put a true there. Comma again. And we'll just add the filter as is. We need to close up parenthesis at the very end though. And just hit enter. Now if we copy that formula and drag that all the way to the side. You can see it now says call Anna, comma, tax deadline. So that's looking much better. Let me go ahead and copy this for all the other cells as well, just in case we have any duplicates over there too. All right, the calendar is now fully functional, but let's be honest, it looks pretty ugly. In fact, it doesn't really look like a calendar at all. So let's work on the formatting next. First thing we'll do is remove all of the helper columns like this one to another worksheet. So control X and I'm going to move it over here to this other worksheet. Same thing over with this stuff. So I'm going to select all of this area, control X and just move that over to the side like that. Now it doesn't really matter if we make big changes in here in terms of the size of a cell or things like that. I'm thinking for the cells that have the events, we want to make those quite a bit thicker. So it's going to be all of these rows that we just want to make thicker like that. And so we'll select those by pressing the control key to select them at the same time like that for each of the ones and then right click. And I'm going to go to row height and change that to something like a 50. Let me zoom out by pressing control alt and the minus key. Okay. So that's what it's looking at like right now. Let me go over to view and get rid of those grid lines. So for each of these, I think it makes sense to center the whole area. So we're going to do that right now by pressing the center part here and this other center as well. But for each of these parts, it would also make sense to try to wrap and center like that so we can read it a bit better. Finally, we can also add some kind of a border around these parts. But first, let me do that wrapping thing all across. So I'm just going to do it for this part. It's already been done. Double click on this format painter and then I can just paste it across all of these areas here. Press escape to get out of that. We've worked on the rows. So let's now work on the columns, actually make it a proper header and maybe change the sizing of that part too. So it's going to be all of this area right here. Right click, column width. We're happy with something like maybe 12. So we'll do that. And then for these parts, let's go ahead and make them bigger. All of this here can be, let's say size 18 or so. And we're also going to change it to a darker background. Control B there to bolden and same thing with this one for the actual dates. I'm just going to make that a fair bit bigger and change this to some kind of a brighter blue, kind of like that. I think that's looking a bit more professional. Now for each of the dates, I think it would be nice to create some kind of border around it. So for all of this, it would have a border so that it divides the dates very clearly. So we're going to go in here. I'm going to choose a lighter line color like this gray right here. And let me just quickly do that once like this for this part. And now all we need to do is replicate those same steps for the other parts. 
So I'm going to do the outside borders. The first one's done, so I'm just going to select that, double click on this format painter, and just apply that all across. Awesome. That's looking a lot better for each of the parts. It's very clear what each date is. I can also bold in some of these rows here. So hopefully that looks a bit better. All the way to that last one. Nice. Other than that, I'm thinking maybe for the weekends, typically they're a different color to working days. So we can select all of those uh, like this and then just change the fill color there to something slightly lighter. Let's say something like this. Nice, this is starting to look quite good, but we're not done yet. We also need to add the week number on the side and a few more things that come later. So for the week number, we can just add a new column in here. And this is going to be the actual number of the week. We can use the function week num. Hit the tab there and as the serial number, we can just select this date. And the return type, we want it to start on a Monday. Close a parenthesis and hit enter. You'll notice though that it gives us week number 53 and that's because the start of the week there doesn't start on the 1st, instead we've got the 29th, hence the 53rd week. If the January 1st was actually a Monday, then we probably wouldn't have that error. It's what it is, I'm just gonna continue with that one all the way to the bottom there and to test if it's working correctly, let's say I go for February, then we continue on to week 10. If I go all the way to December, it should end on week 53 and then switch over to week 2. Let's format the actual week number a bit more nicely on the side as well. So what I'm going to do is merge and center this whole area like this. Then right here, I'm also going to format this differently just with the week like that. And then for each of these, maybe we can put them in gray like the weekends, bolden them. I'm also going to center them and also just add a border on the side like a right border. Awesome. I think that looks pretty clean. We've just ticked off the week number and another cool addition would be to highlight the current date that we're on, which is quite common in calendars. So we can select all of the dates in here and then we're going to head over to conditional formatting, new rule. And that rule is going to be to use a formula where that's true. So in this bottom part here, it's C4. That's the cell that we're looking at. So we're going to put C4 here equals to date. That's the function we want. And when that is the case, so when it is today's date as the format, maybe we can just change the fill to something like an orange color. Press on OK, OK again. And if I go ahead to December 2025, which is when I'm recording, it seems like it's not currently working. So let me actually go back in here as the manage rule. And let me see what the error could be. I'm just going to go over to edit here. And I can see that it's put these quotations around it, which I don't actually want. So I'm going to remove those quotations so that it acts as a proper formula. Press on OK and apply that. OK again. Nice. Now you can see it's the 8th. And if we were to open this file tomorrow, then the 9th would be highlighted. The great thing about this calendar we've made is that it's dynamic. So whenever we add new information, like let's say we want to add a new event in here, I'm just going to copy this part above and paste it down below, but change it here to a test. Let's see what happens. We go over to sheet two. I think this is now in the month of March and then the year is 2026. Now you'll notice we have the video conference comma and we also have the test. We didn't need to press refresh or anything like that. One of the big limitations of this calendar though, is that when we have two transactions, like here we have the video conference and the test, we don't actually see the time for each one, which could be quite useful. I think the quick and dirty way to do that is just putting it in here. So I can say test 8 p.m. or something like that. And you'll notice that's going to update in this part. As you've seen, if you know how to use Excel well, there's a ton of different use cases. If you want to learn how modern analysts are using Excel, watch this video over here, or you can take our Excel course over here. Hit that like and that subscribe and I'll catch you in the next one.